Praise God. Praise God. Woo! Sunday night. Sunday night. Welcome to Faith Talk. Amen. And uh, that's what we're going to talk tonight. I'm not going to talk any negative. Oh, I, I, I know there are negative things, but I don't have to talk negative. Am I right, Bill? And uh, I know you've been sick, but you were back at church and... We had a fiasco over in the fellowship hall, and and some water pipes broke, and the ceiling was falling in the in the kitchen. And and uh, what did you do? You I watched you. You went over and you were punching holes and and finding where where that was at. And then you came back in time to be in there for the ushers. I seen you running in. You sticking that rag in your back back pocket. So you were about the master's business. So anyway, Bill Clark, I just want to tell you how much we love you and how much you're a, you're a part of Venture Church. Amen. I'm going to play this song while people are coming on, and I'm just going to relax with a, with a cup of tea. Amen. And uh, I've got my sweet friend here. Jacqueline is here, and uh, she'll have some words here in a few moments, and we're going to kind of share the time on this. And uh, because God, God has something he wants to tell us tonight. Listen to this. It says, I love, I love your presence. This is a good one. Come on, get online, start uh, asking your people to come on. Whatever, whatever your list is. Do you love them enough to share the gospel with them? Do you love them enough to do that? Thank you, Jesus. Maria, it's good to have you join us tonight. Listen, I love you. I love you. I think you know that. And there's our little Holly. <laughs> now, I literally mean little Holly. She, you just, you're doing great. You know, I think all of us, you know, after kind of the first of the year, all of us kind of uh, started looking at maybe a few pounds we need to take away. I know I did. Amen. I love you too, honey. Hello, hello. Hello, all of you. Isn't that a beautiful song? I love, I love your presence. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Let's just take this time and let's praise him a little bit. Orlando, it's good to have you on. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Who we love your presence. <laughs> this is I Love Your Presence by Bethel Bethel Live. And I don't I don't have uh, the rights to these songs at all. At all. Just 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 sharing them with you to bless your hearts. That's what they're written for, isn't it? It's not just to go out and sell a tape. It's also, it's good to buy all the, the stuff that they put out. Their CDs or download or whatever you do. But it's for one thing. It's to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. David Fajardo, I see you there. Ah, oh, just soak that in for a minute. Just soak that in for a minute, would you? In the depth of my soul, I find peace. Makes me whole. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love, I love your presence, Jesus. I just praise you tonight. Thank you for what you're going to do. Sweet holy God. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, how I love your presence. How I love your presence, God. I love, I love, I love. Yes, I do. Sweet holy God. 
Come on, me and Jackie are just sitting in here just worshiping the Lord. Ready, ready to share with people that want to listen. I hope you got busy. Hope you got busy. Come on, put it on all your contacts. Listen, I, I put it on all my contacts. All the time. I'm sure they, they get tired of me pushing this. And it's not pushing Gloria Fajardo. God exalts her in due season. I, I don't need people to exalt me. I'm, I don't need to be exalted. It's Jesus. Hey Amen. It's good to have you on, Rose. And I know you're taking care of your boy and recovering yourselves. Good to have, have you on, Rose. Hallelujah. <laughs> Marie says, I keep getting kicked out from hearing you, so go figure why. <laughs> I don't know. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. <laughs> devil's a liar. He really is. <laughs> he's such a liar. Oh, he's such a liar. <laughs> uh, we just keep trying and trying till you get on. Amen? Did you get on? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we just praise you tonight, God. We glorify you. We just love you, Jesus. Danny, my son, it's good to have you on. Amen. He says, hey, Mama. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> oh, something about the presence of God. Jesus, I just invite you right now. I invite you to come and just sit down with us tonight. Jesus, just come in all your glory. Oh, God, just come, Father. Come, come with your revelation, not mine, yours, God. I love you too, honey. Isn't that beautiful? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, start your watch parties and whatever you need to do. Come on. I want I want God to do one thing tonight. Not only do I want His presence, but I want Him to show us His glory. I want that glory to come down in our nation. Not, not just tonight on this program, but I want God to come down in our nation. People, our nation is in so much trouble. So much trouble. You know, bringing, bringing in uh, uh, people across the border, children, and then in 72 hours, turn them loose. God, where are they gonna go? What are, God, who's gonna feed them? Who's gonna take care of them? You know, to me, if, if you take someone in, you feed them. You know, you don't just turn them out with no place to go. I pray that that's what they do. I, I, I pray. You know, a lot of these are little teenagers, little teenagers, and of course there's some small ones too. My heart goes out to those babies. And it's, and it's not just because I'm a, I'm a mother. It's just the right thing to do. If you're going to open your country, if I open my house, you know what? They've got a guest bedroom. They've got the best that I can give them. I feed them until the, until the moment they leave. And, and then I find out about them. You know, where, do, do you have someone to take you? You know, then they say, well, you know, if that happens, then we'll give them another 72 hours. Well, you know, sometime, I don't care, you could give a week and they still don't have anywhere to go. Some people don't have contact here in America. They, they, they don't. Hopefully, they will have relatives to run into the arms of, and, and I pray for that. I love the, the Hispanic people. Matter of fact, God called me to minister among them, and I've, I've been among the Spanish people here in Corpus Christi now for almost 34 years. So don't ask me if I love them. They know I love them. Amen. And, uh, but I just want, if they're coming in, I don't, I don't want criminals coming in. Now, I, 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 I agree with, with everyone about that. I don't want people that's going to come in and rape and rob and, and, and steal and destroy and sell your children and, and load drugs into the nation. No, I don't want that. And I, I think anyone in their right mind feels the same way. Am I right? 
I think so. So uh, anyway, listen to this song for a little bit and, and go ahead and, and start uh, contacting. I'll give you a chance to start contacting all your people. Let them come on. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Me and Jackie's over here at work and she's working on the computer helping me here. Praise God. Praise God. Show us your glory, Lord. I love Rick Pino. Oh, my goodness. Rick Pino, matter of fact, has a, a program. It's an everyday program. You ought to go online. I mean, this guy's good. He's, he's got a lot of wisdom and just a young man. And that's uh, awesome. his last name is spelled P I N O, Rick Pino. And uh, this is off his album, Show Us Your Glory. It came out several years ago. But what a, what a powerful message. What a powerful message. What a powerful message. Hallelujah. Well, I'll leave you alone so you can get busy. I'll quit talking. I promise. Hi, Casey. Are you down there sleeping in your bed? That Casey's a good dog. <laughs> My little friend is in here. I had to leave Ladybug outside because he won't leave Jackie alone. <laughs> Ladybug's 80 pounds and he wants to jump all over her. <laughs> Chris Garcia, man, you prayed a par powerful prayer this morning, leading those men. That was powerful. So good to have you with us as, as one of our, our lead pastors. You and Janie both love you guys so much. Hallelujah. Come on, just start praising God with me. Come on, let's have church tonight. Come on. Come on, let those praises start going up. Woo! Lana, good to have you on. Glad to, glad to join you and you to join us. Amen. Because guess what? You just invited me to your house. <laughs> I love you so much. We love you too. Love you too. Love you too, Chris and Jamie. There's my sweet little Brandy. I just wish I could move you back here, but I know you have to... You have to live your life. God promoted her in Dallas. Come on. What a great day in the Lord. Who listen to this? This is out of England, the UK. Listen to him. Woo! Come on. People, listen. People are praising God all over the world. <laughs> Come on. This is off his album. It's songs for an end time army. Woo! People, we're going to have to have God help us. If we're an end time army, we've got to have his presence and his glory in us. Woo! Love you too, Brandy. Come on, if you have some enemies, invite your enemies to listen. Come on, I'll share the love of God with them. Invite people that's giving you a hard time. <laughs> and the first name that came up was David Pichardo. He not giving me a hard time. <laughs> I've got all these names rolling up. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we're here tonight, God, just to worship you. We're here to praise you. We're here to lift you up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty, mighty, mighty Lamb of God. Thank you, mighty Lamb of God. You say, how many times does he have to say, show us your glory, however long it takes? However long it takes. Listen to him. Woo, Joey, good to have you on tonight. We had a good service today, didn't we? Huh? You and Indina, didn't we have a good service? Wow. There's all those men. You can't tell me God doesn't have an army. Come on, that's coming out of the UK right there. 
Come on. Right, right there in the center of, of Great Britain, the power of God, England, whatever you want to call it, the UK, whatever you want to call it, God has taken that, that, that whole area. We're not going to let him have it. We're not going to let him have it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Father, right now, God, Spain is coming on. I believe that. I believe Spain is coming on. We have a lot of people out of Spain, out of Iceland, out of a lot of these different nations that listen to us. Come on, of course, Bulgaria, Russia, Germany. Come on, we have a lot of people. Hallelujah. You're right. You're right. Come on, we have a mandate. You really challenged us this morning. Our Christian walk is no longer usual. It's a mandate for us to walk and to step. Let me see what the rest of that says. To step with what, to uh, stay in step with what the Holy Ghost is asking us to do. Amen, Chris. You got that message. Woo! Glory Mendez. Good to have you on. Love you. Praise God. Praise God. And honey, you, uh, boy, you touched my heart this morning, what you did. That was so precious of you. And I want to tell you what, that, that went right, right back into that office. And I told, I told them, listen, this is a, a blessed gift. This woman did, did work to, to give the money. She didn't have to, she didn't have to give that. God spoke to her. Praise God. People, the gospel has to go forth. Amen. Good to have you on, Holly. Ooh, glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you. Father, we thank you right now. We glorify you. God, we lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, can you join those voices? Yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I guess it's uh, it's about time and uh, make sure that you get your uh, pen and paper out and uh, this is your Bible study. I'm not just on here to just talk and make a bunch of noise and jump up and down and do whatever. I'm here to train you. I'm, I, I'm here to show you and uh, tell you what the Holy Spirit is showing me as, as a pastor and uh, just the body of Christ. See, this not only is for me, it's for all of us. It's for all of us. And uh, so those of you that were in uh, the service this morning, I preached on the master plan. And um, I said, there's not a person under the sound of my voice, for those of you that were not there, because many of you come from different areas and different churches. And um, I said, uh, the, master, the master plan is for his will to be done in your life. And uh, it is, it's through the solid rock. You know, Jesus is the rock of our, our salvation. And so when we build, uh, when we build upon that rock, as, as uh, the word of God says, when we build upon that rock over in the book of Matthew, God's telling us when we build upon the rock, I think it's Matthew 7, 24 and 25, and he said, when you build on solid ground, and I, I uh, to recap a little bit, because this is going to take you into this next teaching, uh, but God gave the illustration, and it just popped in my mind. I didn't even write that down to give it. But I remember driving past uh, uh, here in Corpus Christi when I was looking for a, a home, and uh, I drove in, in an area some of the houses around were gorgeous, but then some were run down. But yet I drove past one and that had been burned to the ground. But yet it was so beautiful. The lot was stunning and flowers and bushes and stuff that was around the, the house, of course, was destroyed. But anyway, um, it just kept being on my mind and, and I drove past and I looked at it a couple of times and in the meantime, God opened the house that we're in and we ended up buying this one and, uh, and it's on an acreage and that's what that was. But uh, it wasn't long that I went past and I noticed that whoever whoever owned the land, whether, whether the bank had taken it back and, and paid insurance. Sorry about that. I had uh, my alarm set and it went off. 
Oh, hold on. Okay, anyway, are you still there? <laughs> uh, those things happen. And uh, so anyway, um, um, I drove past that lot again, and they had cleared away all the ashes and all the things that were charred and, and just cleared it out. They had, uh, had, uh, uh, had literally landscaped the whole deal, and it was beautiful. And uh, anyway, and, it, and it, it had a big sign up, and it said for sale, the foundation was not hurt at all by the fire. And so next time I went by, a huge house was built there. And this morning, and that's, that's been probably 20 years ago, but this morning God brought that back to me. You know, people, there, there are some times that um, God, you know, has you walk through things for his glory. It's not that he was going to give me that house. He had something else in another area for me. But yet what God brought this morning is the fact that when the foundation is good, when the foundation is good, a fire is not going to destroy it. The foundation will remain. And that's what God was saying this morning over in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, in verse number 24. He was telling you that, that when the foundation is, is set, uh, it's not going to be destroyed by floods, whatever comes in, because of what it's, it's made of. And then he likened it unto Christ. He said he is that foundation. He's solid. And then there's another scripture that, and you can look it up for yourself. I don't have it this morning. It's just kind of this evening. It's just coming to me. But God said, be careful how you build on your foundation. And, you know, then all of a sudden God began to show me houses that were in beautiful areas, beautiful areas. And all of them were well kept. And then you'll find two or three houses that are falling around, down around you. Other words, see, the foundation may be good. And whenever that house has fallen down, it's gone. If the foundation is good, it will last for year upon year upon year. And this is what God is trying to tell you. That, that it's, it's, it's our business and it's our place over in Jude, uh, chapter number 1, verse number 20. And she's going to pull that up for me real quickly. And, and it, it says this, in, in Jude uh, 20, it says this, But you, beloved, let's see, that's 20 and, yeah, 1 and 20. It says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. Other words, you're looking for someone else to build you up. You're looking for an evangelist or, or, or a pastor or a psychologist or, or somebody that can build you up. But yet here we have God coming back and, and, and what is he saying? He's saying, I want you to build yourself up in the most holy faith. And so what, what God is telling us, listen, there are two kind of houses that we're going to focus on. There's the former and then there's the latter. Other words, what was before is already gone, but what is former is coming. Now, I'm talking about natural. I'm talking about supernatural. So in Haggai uh, 2 and 9, it says, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. This place, In this place I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, if you remember a couple of days ago, I spoke on keeping the peace. Matter of fact, it was on the 4th. I'm looking over at those notes. Keep the peace. And whenever, whenever I spoke about keeping the peace, I'm not talking about keeping peace in your house, keeping peace with people, uh, 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 calling down peace. I wasn't talking about any of that. What God was saying to keep the peace, he gave me that scripture that says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, I give. And so in order for you to grow in God, how many of you want to grow in God? If you want to grow in God and you, you want the, the former house to be greater than the latter, in other words, what, what God has for you to be greater than what was torn down. Some of you have, have suffered things, listen, you know, there, there are two kind of houses. And, and listen, I, I can tell you right now, Sometime, not always, but sometime the former and the latter situation is in the lives of believers. We have a problem sometime. 
We have the assurance of the latter. In other words, what's, what happened in the past. We talk about that situation. and But yet, the Bible said what's coming, the former, is going to be greater. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.24. It said, because faithfulness, faithful is he who has called us. See, if you're listening to me right now, the master plan is at work. You that are taking this to heart. And what God is trying to tell you that the former house often, listen to me, what you used to have sometime, the characteristics has been what? Dissatisfaction and unpleasantness, maybe divorce, maybe sickness, maybe sorrow, perhaps all kind of things have happened. But what God is trying to tell you, if we stay in God and we keep building on that foundation, that foundation will last. It will last, I'm telling you. It will last, and no matter what Satan tries to do to take the foundation away from you, he doesn't have the power to take that foundation. But it's your responsibility. Something I noticed about that house, because I stopped and I walked around that house years ago. I walked on that foundation, and I noticed there was there was all kind of bolts, and, and, and I went home, and, and I asked David, I said, David, I thought the brick on a house and all that, what is all that, all these, these bolts and all this, this, this rebarb and, and stuff like that, what is all that type of stuff sticking out of that foundation? And he said, Gloria, that's what holds the house to it. So see, God has what we need. That was not destroyed in the fire. It was still there. The foundation was there. That that was under that foundation, that rebarb that was sticking out, that was safe. Those bolts, yeah, they 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 were there. Maybe they had to had to cut them off and put some more. Doesn't matter. But what what God's trying to tell you, it's your place. If you need the Holy Ghost, get the Holy Ghost. If you need salvation, give your heart to God. Quit running from God. And if you've had dissatisfaction with church in the past or with God, people, there, there is nothing unpleasant about God. Everything about God is excellent. And so God said in his word, come on, he said, because he is faithful, who has what called us, if he has said it, he will surely do it. First Thessalonians 5.24. Now look at Haggai 1 and 3. This, that, this is powerful. Sometime, you know, even in Israel, those things in the past, listen, they fought over everything. They fought over the temple and they destroyed that temple. The enemy came in and took that Solomon's temple away from them. And what did they do? The people came back, took it back. 66 years went by and they're rebuilding. And you know what? That house in the natural will never be Solomon's house. It will never have the wealth. It will never have the influence that it had in the past. Yes, it's a tabernacle. But, you know, in, in, in the natural, God wants more than just to say, for you to say, yeah, I gave my heart to the Lord 20 years ago or 50 years or three years ago. Have you started building yet? And those of you that have built upon that foundation, which is God, are you still believing God? You know why? God doesn't want the former house to be like the one in the past. What God is going to do in the future is not going to be like it was in the past. But we want that same old move of God. No, there's nothing old about the new uh, the, the move of God in the past. He's just going to rebuild. This is what God is, is saying right now. He's going to rebuild again. But you know what he's going to do on the inside of us because we are an end time army. We're not going to be, see, God knows, God knows when the time is growing close. We are an end time army. Jesus is getting ready to come. And so, you know what? We can't do things like we did in the past. We can't look up and say, you know, God, you know, you may come and you may not come. You didn't come in the last thousand years. We can't do that anymore. Haggai 1 and 3 says, listen to this. This is powerful. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That's Haggai talking. The glory of the latter house is described here in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse number 9. Write that down. 1 Corinthians. Now, you need to study this out for yourself. Don't just take one verse like I'm giving you. Haggai 1 and 3, you need to read that whole story that talks about you and me. That text talks about us rebuilding 
taking that that's been wasted and taken away and adding back, but adding it greater and stronger. See, if you, if you sin and you make a mistake, what do you do? The devil, listen, if the devil fools you again, shame on you. If he gets you back into the same traps, shame on you. Here's what, here's what God says in his word. He says that the better, the better is the end of the thing than the beginning. For the glory of the latter house, come on, is described right here in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, which says, Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man those things that God has prepared for us. Oh, yeah, that's when we get to heaven. Oh, yeah, that's true. But your eye has not seen what God's going to do on this earth. If you were in our service this morning, you would know what Pastor Glory was telling you. I was sharing with you 50 years of ministry from the time we started until this present hour. It's not quite 50 years. But, but I, I look back over those years and you know what? We've always had food on the table. We've always had a roof over our head. We never have been laid on our electric bills and on our, on our bills. You know why? Because we totally and completely put our trust in God. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what God is telling you right now. He wants you to trust Him. People, you, can, you cannot, are you listening to me? You cannot turn aside and say, well, you know, I don't know if I can trust God or not. Yes, you can. Over in, over in, the, in, in the book of Hebrew, people, it's powerful what God has to say to us. Over in the book of Hebrew, God begins to, to tell us in Hebrew 6 and 12, and then he said that you be not slothful. He's telling you that. Be not slothful. In other words, don't be lazy, but followers of them who through faith, listen to me, who through faith, men that has shown, come on, what God has shown in faith and patience, they have inherited all of his promises. People, God has given us a promise. Don't let Satan take it away from you. What does it say in Isaiah 40, 13? Come on. In Isaiah 30, 14, I know that. Come on. You know what it says? Come on. Because God wants you to know that our hope is in God. It's not in anything else. It's not in people. It's not in your jobs. It's not in social security. It's not in a government. It's not in a king or a queen or a president or a pastor. Your hope is in God. Christina, or, or, or uh, uh, Christina, <laughs> Christopher, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> come on, your hope is in God. It says, for they that wait upon the Lord will what? Renew, that means rebuild. You're going to renew yourself again. If you fell down, get up. If you fell down, get up. He said, even though we go through light afflictions, people. Come on. He said, he, we're going to mount up with wings like eagles. We're going to run and not grow weary. And we're going to walk and not faint. Hope. Hope gives you, come on. Hope helps you walk again. Come on. Faith helps you stand strong. Hope will help you walk again, but faith will help you walk. Amen. Are y'all still with me? And so what God is trying to show you right here, that God is greater than all the forces of darkness and even though you go through afflictions, even light afflictions that you may go through, what does God say about it? You know that your light afflictions in 1 Corinthians 4, 17, it says this, and that it's not worthy to be what compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in you. Come on, Romans, the 18th chapter. People, God is trying to tell you. He's trying, listen, even though you have afflictions, even though you go through things, it does not matter because God is greater than all the forces of darkness. Last scripture. You ready for this? Come on. God's trying to tell you something. God's trying to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Hebrew, the 12th chapter mm -hmm. and verse number two, you need to remember this. We too will surely come into the glory of the latter house if we do not faint. People, that's where it's at. I want you to, to, to say something about this. I know you have, you have grown children or children that are almost grown. and You went through a, a lot of stuff. Let me unplug this so I can turn it toward her. Here I am. 
There she is. Yeah, before we started, I was um, sharing with Pastor Gloria, you know, the reality of recognizing where we have potentially built on a foundation that is not good, but maybe even built with material that was not lasting. Maybe we have Christ, right? We have that foundation, but I know in my life that, um, you know, I have some areas where I was repenting to the Lord recently, and I just said, Lord, I want... I don't ever want to build with things that aren't eternal, you know. And so as Pastor Gloria has been leading us in discussing things that um, having hope praises our weapon, that, that'll build your faith too, okay? How are we going to overcome, right? By building, building on the foundation of Christ, on his word, strengthening ourselves through praise, right? And so I just want to encourage you to just go before the Lord and maybe say, Lord, what is it that I'm building with that may not be eternal, you mm -hmm. know? And let, so, me, let, let, let me ask you something, Jackie. Yeah. Whenever, when you're going through stuff, yeah. what, do, what, what is the scripture that you use in your life? What, what gives you strength? Just start. There are so many. Um, I just recently, you know, as I've started running and stuff, I just keep, all, throughout the day, I just say, mm -hmm. I... Um, through through Christ, I can do all things through Christ who yeah. strengthens me. I can do yeah. all things through Christ That's who strengthens me. That's and, a promise. And it's just simple. And I keep it simple because, you know, the Lord, I usually do songs. You know, the Lord will encourage mm -hmm. me through music. There you and go. And so there, um, you go. there are various songs, you know, that, that I will wake up singing. Mm -hmm. And so the one that I woke up to a couple days ago was, You're the only one found worthy, the Lion of Judah. You're the only one found worthy. Wow. The son of David, you know, and you're the only one found worthy, you know, and so I just wake up singing these songs mm -hmm. and he, mm -hmm. that's kind of how he speaks mm -hmm. to me is mm -hmm. he wakes me up with songs and that's mm -hmm. what I meditate on. And then I get in the mm -hmm. word oftentimes. Um, and that, that just, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. alive and he's real and he speaks to us. And I find mm -hmm. that we have to pay attention, mm -hmm. you know, to what, how is he speaking to you? And if he's giving you those, those building blocks, you right. know, for, yeah, those building blocks to build you up. Are we paying attention mm -hmm. and recognizing that he's doing that? Right. right. You know, Jackie, I, I, I really I really feel like um, the Holy Spirit, I want you to pray first and mm -hmm. then I'm going to come back. I know that she has children. She has teenagers and, you know, and then she has little children also. Mm -hmm. She adopted two beautiful boys. and uh, But anyway, uh, I want her to pray for those of you that w with children and, uh, you know, that may be new in marriage. I'm not new in marriage. I've been married a long time. And I'm going to have her pray for you right now. And I want you to receive that, and then I'll come back and pray with you. Lord Jesus, I lift up right now my children, our children, Orlando and my children, and all the children out there that we are contending for, Lord, that we have contended for we pray your blood over them we pray salvation over them we pray that they would know you and love you lord we we know and we proclaim and we declare that nothing will snatch them out of your hand you said lord that if we pray and believe nothing is impossible lord you said that if we pray we and our household will be saved will be saved shall be saved lord so i will not i will not doubt for any of our children lord i don't care how impossible it looks lord you are the, the one who conquers the impossible. So Jesus, I pray right now, your blood, your salvation, your, your hope, your purposes, your revelation, I pray that you chase after them. Your goodness will keep chasing after them, Lord, that your love and your extravagant kindness will continue to encourage them. Lord, give them dreams and visions and prophetic revelation to um, speak to their hearts. You know, you know, Jackie, what, no, keep okay. it over there. What, um, we're pushing an iPhone back and forth here. Yeah. Uh, what uh, what I'm feeling in my heart, there's a prophetic word that you have for someone right now that's just going through difficulty and uh, with home and, and just everything that's going on, money, whatever. I just want you to speak right to that camera. Mm -hmm. And people, if you will, if it's for you, receive it. If not, another message will come later on down the line. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to speak prophetically what, what you're feeling and, and speak to an individual. When you said that, Pastor Gloria, what came to my heart tonight was, um, right when she said that, what came to my mind was, seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. 
We need to stop you, I include myself in this, we need to stop looking at the money and stop looking at our children and stop looking at our jobs and stop looking at politics and stop looking at all these things and say, you know what, I'm gonna have an audience of one and really get back to that first love. I really, I, I really believe Jesus is saying, come back to your first love. You're paying attention to all these other things, but you're not paying attention to me. Wow. And so to set apart that, that first fruits, you know, of your time, I'm speaking to myself, but I know this is for you too. We're setting a time, our first fruits of our money. Okay, it's not our money. When you're married to Jesus, because see, we, we are no longer slaves, we're now friends. But Jesus takes it even further and he says, I'm your, I'm your bridegroom, you That's marry right. me. And when you become married, contrary to this culture that we're living in, when you become married, there's no, this is mine, that's yours. It's truly 100%. I take on his name, everything I have is his and everything he has is mine. And the Bible says Christ has given us all things. Yes. He's given us the kingdom and he delights to give it to us. Mm -hmm. But are we walking in it? That's it right there. That's it. Are right we walking there. in it? That's so, it. first fruits time, first fruits attention, first fruits finances. First because okay. you know what? Ten percent is not his. A hundred percent. Have you prepared <laughs> your heart? Have I, I've prepared 100%. my heart. I'm not. It hasn't happened yet. But I've prepared my heart for the day that he says, "Jackie, sell everything and give it away and come and follow me," mm. because I know ten percent is like, I'm married to him. It's all his. I'm just mm -hmm. stewarding it. Mm -hmm. So are we so, truly wholehearted? So, so basically, uh, what you're saying, it's not that it's not that God tells you to give all your money to uh, into the gospel. She's not saying that. God knows that you have to live. But what she's saying, because you're married to the Lord, so it's like with me and David. David's money is my money, mm -hmm. and his and 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 vice versa. And you know what we do? We share. And this is what God, he's, the little bit that we give, maybe our whole lives or a 10% offering uh, or a tithe. See, tithe is not an option according to the word of God. God commanded you to bring all, all, all your 10% into the storehouse. But what she's talking about, as well as, as your tithe and offering into the work of God, she's talking about your lives. He wants all of you. Mm -hmm. And so, listen. David and I, we don't, we don't hide money from each other. You know what we do? Matter of fact, every time I turn around, David, David is giving me money. And, and if he says to me, you know, like uh, he says, uh, Glory, do you have 50? Well, I'll give him 50. And you know what he does? Come on. He's the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. He'll give me back 500. Mm -hmm. I say, hey, that's a good deal. You need another 50? <laughs> so <Amen. laughs> what God is wanting is your heart. Yeah. Listen, we're, we're going to pray right now, and I'm going to lift up uh, all your needs to the Lord. And uh, we're just going to believe God is going to meet every need that you have. I'm going to ask you right now, if, if you have a need, I do know that uh, right now there's um, uh, a family. It's part of our family um, in Houston. Gary Shelton, uh, they have called in his entire family, said uh, he's not going to make it through the night. But we're not going to receive that. We're not going to receive that. We're going to pray right now mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, everyone say, well, pray the will of God, pray the will of God. Well, you know, the will of God is for us to be healed. And so we're going to stay in faith and let him take care of the other. Amen. The Bible said walk in faith. I used to love what Kenneth Hagin would say. He said, when you turn that, 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 that light switch on, you're going to get light. Mm -hmm. You turn it off, and it's going to go dark. Keep the faith. Keep it all the way to the end. The Bible said of Abraham, he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. Over in the book of Hebrew, you'll see a lot of them that trusted God in, in their, their season and their generation, but it was not yet time for God to reveal all this other end time stuff to them. And so they were looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. I would rather die in faith, and I guarantee you if, if Gary Shelton dies tonight, he's dying in faith. I'm just telling you right now, he's believing God. And listen, how, how can you have regrets if a person passes on and goes to be with the Lord? But we're not turning loose, Gary, right now. We're not going to turn loose. 
We're going to believe God. And I want all of you right now that know Gary to start putting some hearts up. My family's in there. My, my, uh, my granddaughter's in there. My whole family's around there. That's, that's her father-in-law. And uh, Cheryl, his wife, is there. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to cry out to God concerning Gary. And Father, right now, God, in the name of Jesus, people, if you're praying with me, put your hearts up. I know you know him. Father, right now, God, you know that Gary is a soul winner deluxe. I have never, ever, ever met anyone like him beside Brother Bowens down in the valley. And God, Gary is just like him. And God, he's just like Lester Summerall. He had a heart of gold, love young people. And Father, right now, God, I'm asking you, Father, to spare his life. I'm asking you to raise him up. I know now that he has, has had a stroke. Uh, and I know, God, that it's going to be a supernatural if you do it. God, right now, we're asking for a supernatural, a supernatural. We have seen it over and over, a supernatural raising up of Gary Shelton. Father God, clear his lungs, touch his heart, God, where the oxygen, he hadn't been getting oxygen to his brain, and it, it caused a stroke. Father, heal that. And Father, I'm going to put him in your hands because, God, he is in your hands. And Father, it does not matter, life or death, he's a conqueror, Father. And God, I ask that you be there. I wish I could be in that room right now with them. But God, I've taken you into the room. I've taken you, God. And Father, wherever you go, I'm there also, Father. God, you're side by side. We're side by side. And Father, I pray for every person right now. God, there's others going through the same type of situation. But God, I know that you're a God that's more than able. Father, we lift up our children. We lift them up, those that are going through surgery, those who are hurting. Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that, God, that you'd bring finance, God, that you would help them pay their bills, God. And, Father, we lift up our nation and we lift up around the world that, God, that you would send a Holy Ghost revival like the world has never seen, Father. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. And, God, I lift up every pastor right now, every pastor, every church. Guess what, people? The church is wide open. The devil doesn't like it, but the church is wide open. And next Sunday, I want to see all of you in church. And if you're not from Venture Church, be in your church. Go back and support your pastor. Don't, don't allow your pastor to get defeated and end up leaving ministry or, or leaving your church. Don't do that. Stand by your pastor. Stand by each other. Encourage each other in the faith. Amen. Listen, God bless you. I love you. And we're believing God that not only God has healed Gary, but that whoever in faith has believed. Listen, people, let's rebuild again and let it start with you and your own house in Jesus' name. God bless you. Listen, I'll uh, see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock at Lord willing. But if Jesus comes, I'll meet you in the air.